So we've had an introduction to the adaptive immune cells, B cells and T cells. We've talked about how the receptors are really what sets them apart and that each T or B cell develops with a unique receptor. This occurs through somatic recombination. Somatic recombination, the process of going into the DNA, cutting, pasting, adding some random nucleotides so that each cell develops as an individual. For these next two lectures, we're going to talk about the process by which each of these cells actually goes through this development. So starting with B cell development, which is actually a little bit simpler than T cell development, um, we're just going to go through every step of this process, knowing what is happening where, where with all these red proteins and TDT coming in, um, and how we end up with a mature B cell with a good receptor. And what's important here is that not every cell that starts out to become a B cell or a T cell is going to actually end up being a mature T or B cell. There are a lot of checkpoints here. Because of this whole process of going into the DNA, cutting and pasting, there are a lot of places where things can go wrong. So there are a lot of steps or a lot of checkpoints in between each of these steps so that we make sure that we have B cells and T cells that are functional and are not going to activate against ourselves and cause autoimmunity. So we are going to go through the process of B cell development. And I just want to start out by reminding you that each B cell receptor is made up of two heavy chains and two light chains. The two heavy chains are exactly the same. So this heavy chain and this heavy chain mirror images of each other, it's the exact same thing. Same with the light chains. Each of these light chains are exactly the same on a single cell. So each cell makes one heavy chain, one light chain, that makes two copies of each of those to put together. And so what is this process of rearranging the heavy and the light chain areas in the DNA so that we can make mRNA and make proteins to actually have mature B cells that can then develop and maybe release those uh, versions of those B cell receptors as antibodies. So our first step is actually just deciding what stem cells are going to become B cells. This is sort of the application process or something, if you will. As a cell goes from an HSC, a hematopoietic stem cell, which means it can become any immune cell, to actually be chosen to become a B cell, this is an interaction that occurs in the bone marrow stroma. Our HSCs live in the bone marrow, where they hide out, do a bone marrow transplant or transplanting stem cells. And there are some proteins on the bone marrow stroma. You don't have to know what the proteins are, but those interact with some small subset of HSCs to actually kind of pick them out to become B cells. So after an HSC interacts with, in the bone marrow stroma, it's just cells in the bone marrow. Um, after the HSC interacts, or a certain one interacts with the bone marrow stroma protein, it will become a pro B cell. Not every stem cell becomes a pro B cell, but some subset. We don't want all B cells. Nothing has really happened yet. Still looks kind of like a stem cell, but it is starting the process of going to become a B cell. It's like being accepted to medical school. You're not a doctor yet. You haven't actually even learned anything about being a doctor, but you have gotten the nod. The HSC is going to become a pro B cell. Next thing that's gonna happen is we are going to do that somatic recombination to make a heavy chain. We're gonna start by focusing on the heavy chain. It's the bigger chain, more goes wrong. We're gonna start out with those RAG proteins coming in to that variable region putting together those segments, the V, D, and J, that make up the variable region. Um, sorry, trying to get things up. Remember that this is all occurring within the DNA. We are actually going into the DNA, cutting, pasting, TDT is putting some junctional diversity in here. And then we're gonna see how did that go? we are actually going to take that DNA, make mRNA, and make a protein. 
Now, if everything went well, we will have a heavy chain that combined with what we're what is called the surrogate light chain. The surrogate light chain, surrogate, just sort of a temporary thing. We don't want to dive right in, make a heavy chain and a light chain and everything, and have neither of them work. So we take one step at a time. Just like you don't just say like, okay, now take one exam for all of the things for medical school. No, one thing at a time. You have to pass your classes before they let you sit for the USMLE. You know, one thing at a time. So first, you are a pro B cell that starts this heavy chain rearranging process. If you're successful, let's test it out. We're going to just use a surrogate light chain, almost like a fake patient here. But something to note is that this heavy chain needs to be able to not have like stop codons added or some problem, needs to make an actual heavy chain. It also needs to be able to interact with proteins called Ig alpha and Ig beta. B cell receptors and T cell receptors themselves don't signal well. They need helper signaling proteins. So we need to make sure that that heavy chain makes a good protein that can interact with both the light, surrogate light chain and actually interact and signal through Ig alpha and beta. And this all happens on the cell surface. We're going all out. We are actually seeing, can this protein make it to the cell surface and basically function as a kind of receptor? It's not gonna bind antigen yet or anything. We're just seeing if it actually you know, can stand up on its own. If it can't, it has another chance. We actually have two chromosomes. One for my mom, one for her dad. And so we can rearrange it the other one. We start out by doing one chromosome first. If that's not successful, we do the other. And you don't have to worry about the early versus late. We're just gonna say they do one at a time, not worry about it. Um, and honestly, only about half of these rearrangements make proper light chains, or sorry, heavy chains. They combine with the surrogate light chains and can interact with Ig alpha and beta. So this is the first major checkpoint, going from pro-B to pre-B. So a pro-B cell has the nod, a pre-B cell has at least passed some of its classes. Pretty good. Um, basically, it has been able to make a heavy chain that can make it to the cell service, fine with the appropriate things. Time to do the other chain now. Now we do a light chain. And the light chain has a whole other extra challenge in that it not only needs to sort of make a good protein, it also needs to be able to interact with that heavy chain that we've already made. And so what's nice about this is that we have um, a few more chances here. In order to, um, I don't have all of that here. Um, in order to make a light chain, we have two places in our genome that could potentially make light chain, kappa and lambda. So we're gonna start with one and move to the other. Um, and we also have two chromosomes. So because the light chain not only needs to make a functional protein after recombination, it also needs to be able to bind with that heavy chain, which is already made. We have two chances to make a heavy chain and four chances to make a light chain. So we have kappa on the chromosome from our mom, kappa on the chromosome from our dad, lambda on the uh, chromosome from our mom, lambda from the chromosome on our dad, from our dad. So four different chances to hopefully make a functional B cell receptor. Once it has become a functional B cell receptor, gone from the pre-B cell receptor to the actual B cell receptor, it is considered an immature B cell. One more thing that needs to happen though. We actually wanna make sure that that B cell doesn't really respond very strongly to our own proteins. B cell negative selection is sort of a kind of vague process. Essentially, the immature B cell hangs out in the bone marrow for a little while in a safe space and sort of says, hey, do you recognize and bind to any self molecules? And if you do, 
we're going to either delete you, you're going to undergo apoptosis, you're going to die, or you're going to enter a stage called energy. Energy just means non-responsiveness. I think of negative selection as, um, so sorry, I guess like passing some of your early classes in medical school would be step one. Actually graduating medical school would turn you into an immature B cell. Getting through negative selection is what actually certifies you to be a doctor. Um, and if you don't pass that last one, sure, maybe you can kind of hang out. You might not be able to, they might, well, it won't kill you, but you might be eliminated. Um, but you may also just be able to be out there, but not actually respond. And don't worry about that one for now. So can you make a heavy chain? Sure, if you, that combines the surrogate light chain and um, we'll go back up to here. <laughs> Should have done this in different order. Can you make a heavy chain that combines the surrogate light chain and Ig alpha and beta? If so, you can go from pro B cell to pre B cell. Can you make a light chain that can actually bind to the heavy chain you've already made? If so, you can go from pre B cell to immature B cell. Do you recognize self, which is just kind of like hang out here in this safe space where we know there are pathogens? If so, you don't find anything, great. You, um, and I don't want to call this positive selection. You get to become a mature B cell. Positive selection is more like your T cells. Now, once the immature B cell has made it through selection, it can actually leave the bone marrow. Um, some B cells will hang out in the bone marrow. They may go to the spleen. It really depends. Some will go through the lymphoid organs. B cells are a little bit fuzzier than T cells. T cells are very specifically going to go places, but B cells, we have some B cells that are really going to hang out in the spleen, other B cells that are really going to hang out in the lymphoid organs. And some B cells actually do stay in the bone marrow for a little bit. We're going to get into all of the details of all of that later. But most importantly, right now, um, we have a mature B cell. 